Hi, and welcome back to Ottawa Valley Rambles. Today I'm heading off to Gatineau to meet up with Rick, and we're going to be covering the first portage, or the lower portage, right near the Chaudière Falls. This will be a three-part series covering all of the portages that were used to get past the waterfalls and rapids along the Ottawa River between Ottawa and Aylmer. Stay tuned. Okay, we'll get all our stuff and we'll head down to the Portage Bridge. Yeah. So Andrew, we're walking right along the channel, which is the first Portage. Yeah. Uh, it had several names, uh, starting with the French voyageurs, they would call it the Portage du Bas. And then, uh, of course, then you have the first Portage or the lower Portage and uh, it leads right to the spring landing. We're gonna go down and see the uh, opening of that portage. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Let's take a minute to get ourselves oriented with the map. On the right-hand side, you can see where Parliament Hill is. If you look over to your left, you see the Chaudière Falls. These falls are the reason why there was a portage in the first place. If you look at the blue line, this indicates where there used to be a natural inlet which is roughly 400 meters long that went from the Ottawa River right to about where the ZB complex is right now. That went to what we call the spring landing. Below that was the summer landing. The summer landing was presumed to be a tougher place to land when the water was high in the spring, so they used the spring landing during that time. When you look over to the far left of the image, you can see where the end of the portage was. This is where people would drop their boats back into the water and head west. Then finally, this big red line is where the hull slide existed. It encompassed the entirety of the natural inlet and was used to get logs around the falls and was the first timber slide in the area. Let me set the scene in front of me. I'm looking at uh, Victoria Island there. Um, just downstream from the Chaudière Falls, the great Akikojiwan. We're on unceded land of the Anishinaabe, the Algonquin people, and uh, Parliament behind us. It's uh, fantastic. They we're essentially right at the very mouth of the first portage, uh, what would be called the spring entrance uh, to the spring landing. Um, this was where, uh, if you're going to make it through the three portages, uh, it's, this is where a long, very long day starts. Uh, usually anybody traveling up the river would camp downstream at the encampment we were at at Lemie Lake, and then wake up early in the morning, have their breakfast, and then head up the, the river. And usually, if they're not in a terrible hurry, they would camp after the third portage, because there's a camp uh, a camping area there as well, an encampment uh, area used for millennia. So right here on the, the rocks that we're sitting at at the beginning of the first portage is essentially where there's a clash of cultures, if you will. This is where for thousands, a thousand, thousands of years, this was the superhighway leading to the interior in the northwest. Um, anybody going up the river uh, and anybody going into the, towards the Great Lakes would come up this river. Uh, and then, of course, the first settlers arrive. And when they arrive, they take over the falls for their mills, etc. So Philemon Wright uh, and his family begin to exploit the falls. Um, the falls were a sacred place where to, to uh, bless your journey and to protect you. The indigenous people would usually perform a uh, tobacco ceremony where they would throw tobacco leaves into the falls. And then when Philemon Wright arrives, of course, one could say there's a desecration of those falls as he builds around them. The great timber rafts then started coming down the river. Now, a timber raft weighs several tens of thousands of tons. So when it's broken up into cribs and it comes down the, the slide, it has to be moored and reassembled. So they put sometimes hundreds of cribs together to float all the way down to Quebec City. And those cribs would blow in the wind and in the current and they had to be secured. So these mooring rings 
were driven into the limestone. These huge spikes, metal spikes and mooring rings were used to secure the rafts to these very rocks. So that mooring ring that is sitting here has an H stamped onto it. Can't, I can't think of exactly who that would be because it would be, uh, it would be indicating that it is a mooring ring belonging to one of the companies here. But um, this could be, as could be 200 years old. Uh, so anywhere from 200 to, uh, let's say, 150 years old that that was driven into the stones. And there are several mo mooring rings around us. This is one of the most spectacular spots in Ottawa. And uh, unfortunately, it basically is used by homeless people and uh, people who want, teenagers who want to have a drink. This right here is the opening uh, of the natural channel that leads from the Ottawa River. And you can see the water is very calm here. So if you came up to Portage, this would be an easy entrance to get past the falls. The channel would lead all the way up, almost to the point where you get to what today is the EB Eddy uh, installation, or ZB now. Um, but there was a natural entrance here, a channel that probably went a good 400 meters or so. Uh, and uh, then you would have a climb up, uh, probably rambling over rocks and earth and whatnot. It was a pretty tough climb because it was a tough enough climb that although you'd think this would be very protected and would be the chosen and preferred way to get in, in the summertime or at this time of the year where the stream is fairly uh, easy and the, the flow is fairly easy, there's actually a summer landing that's further upriver where the climb was said to be easier. So, and obviously less of a portage as well. But uh, this was also the exit of the hull slide. So the timber rafts above the falls would be broken up into cribs. Cribs are 24 feet wide. They go through the hull slide. Ruggles Wright created that in 1829. And basically he blasted out a channel that led to this natural gully from above the falls. So you'd have the timber slide coming straight down. Timber slide was no more than about 300, 400 feet long. And then you had this very long natural channel that led to the river. So you were mentioning earlier, like I asked you if you'd seen this photo of one of the timber slides where you can see, I think it's Parliament in the back, but you can see at least Barracks Hill or Parliament Hill in the back. Exactly. Was that the same spot? You mentioned a government slide. It's not the same spot. There were actually three slides in the Chaudière area. The first one is the Hull Slide built by Ruggles Wright in 1829. The next one was built in what today is called the Buchanan Channel because it was the, uh, George Buchanan that built it in uh, 1835. And uh, then there was the further south channel, which uh, essentially is, you'd say, in front of the War Museum on the other side of Victoria Island. That was the, lo the longest and the safest uh, slide built after B Buchanan's slide um, ceased to uh, be used. Uh, the most dangerous of the three slides was considered to be the hull slide. Okay. Uh, ten men a year would be lost on that slide. So that long one you're mentioning is the one that goes by the Mill Street Exactly company, right, no. and it, it pointed straight towards the Mill Tavern. Yeah. No, Rick did not bring his laundry today. <laughs> so what are you looking at there, Rick? I'm looking at a paving stone. Now there's writing on it, and uh, I'm trying to see if I can see anything of any note. So if I put the sun on that at an oblique angle, I don't know if I'm getting a date. No, I don't think so. It looks like 18. I, I'd love to think it was made in 18 something, but it's a paving stone. Sun We're down at the channel that looks like it's the end of the channel before it got filled in way back when they got rid of this slide. It's not the uh, nicest smelling area we've photographed or videotaped in. So let's, um, what did you find over there? Well, where we are exactly is when you look at the channel, there's an island at the very mouth of it. So we're in the east channel and uh, all of this has been filled in over the years. 
Um, so the, the, the natural arm that led all the way up to the hull slide, um, obviously the water would go all the way in for hundreds of meters. Uh, this is where it ends today, and I'm no more than about uh, 60 meters from the, the, where we were filming a second ago. Um, this concrete slab here is a, a huge slab of aggregate, and um, it, uh, I'm sure, dates probably from the early uh, 19th century. Uh, there's no rebar in this one. <laughs> the last one there, there was rebar in, so that would date much later. It seems like we're getting into prettier and prettier areas of the Ottawa River. What's the significance of this spot that I they, see behind you? Right now they're building ZB here. Yeah. So much of what was what used to be Philman Island during the settler area, much of it is being obliterated. Um, the, the lower portage is of course one of three portages, but the lower portage, if you want to get by the Chaudière Falls and the Duchesne Rapids, is the first portage has two, two sections, the summer landing and the spring landing. Summer landing is essentially right here. And they would come up on the shore when the water was not too high or running too fast in the summertime. And they would take their canoes here, it would shorten the portage, and that would take them right by the Devil's Hole. Uh, this channel that, is, that we see right at my feet is actually the channel that led to the Little Chaudière Falls. Little Chaudière Falls have now been obliterated by all of the building, including Philemon Wright's buildings that went around it. And it was the Little Chaudière Falls that created the Devil's Hole. So the legend is that in Champlain's report that they would, the indigenous people would throw tobacco into the falls. Some historians say it was into the falls. Some historians say it was into the Devil's Hole. And I uh, have no opinion on the matter, but I would suspect that Akikojiwan, the name of the falls, uh, is uh, probably the likeliest place simply because it was the, the named place. Whereas the Devil's Fall for the indigenous did, did not have a name that we know of. So I think we're at the end of the first portage. We've walked over to towards Brewery Creek, just uh, west of the Chaudière Falls. What's the significance of this spot? This, as you say, is the end of the lower portage, the portage du bas. And um, uh, it's 743 steps long from the channel that I, uh, we, we've been talking about, the, essentially the inlet from the Ottawa River that took us to the spring landing. 743 steps because in a report from a voyageur, he counted them. I wonder <laughs> so, how long his legs were. Yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine his legs were pretty strong, <laughs> I'm going to say. So all of the portages, in fact, are measured in that respect, that they, uh, we know how many steps they were. So here we are, and Brewery Creek uh, is the name of this inlet from the Ottawa River which separates Hull, Hull Island from the rest of Hull. And uh, because Brewery Creek is essentially just an inlet uh, or an arm of the Ottawa River. Uh, but uh, this is the place where you would have taken your first portage. And I'm pretty sure most people voyaging past the Chaudière Falls up the river uh, would not stop to camp here. It wasn't, uh, it's not that arduous a portage. The second one, is more arduous than the first and uh, it would all depend I imagine on what time of the day you got to the beginning of the portage whether you 
whether you're going to camp or where you're going to camp. But I don't, I don't believe there would be any camping done in this area. But uh, who knows? Who knows? So should we grab our canoe and go to the next portage? Off we go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs>